If you find something unusual buried in your back garden and you don't know how to explain it, call an archaeologist for help. If they don't understand it, they'll call a scientist. If a scientist doesn't understand it, we have a problem. Coming across impenetrable mysteries is nothing new for archaeologists. It happens to them quite regularly. And while scientists can help them out with some of the answers when they're facing a puzzle, they can't always provide all of them, as you're about to see. Dinosaurs were the largest creatures ever to walk across the face of the Earth. We all know that, and we've known that for years. Archaeologists finding dinosaur bones is nothing new, but when they find one that's larger than anything they've ever seen before, it's worth writing home about. That's what happened when the thigh bone of a previously unknown species of titanosaur was dug up in Argentina in 2014. By extrapolating data from the thigh bone alone, scientists have concluded that it must have been at least 130 feet long and 60 feet tall. Factor in all of its skin and organs, and it would have weighed over 70 tons. To put it another way, it would have been like a large building walking around on gigantic legs. The fossilized thighs are embedded in rock that's around 100 million years old, meaning that this sauropod would have belonged to Earth's Cretaceous period. Now we found a small piece of it. The race is on to find more remains so we can begin to piece a complete skeleton of the humongous creature together. If you dug into the ground beneath your basement and found a stash of beer perfectly preserved inside unopened bottles, you might be tempted to drink it but you'd be advised not to sample the beer cache that was found at the site of the old Scarborough Castle Inn in Leeds, England in March 2020. The beer was bottled and stored in the 19th century, and so it would have gone off many years ago, and even if it hadn't, it would still be poisonous. Mystifyingly, as well as being around 3% alcohol by volume, the beer is also 0.15% lead. Over 300 bottles were found at the site, all brewed by a long-forgotten company called J.E. Richardson. It's doubtful that a brewery would want to deliberately poison its customers, but the lead percentage of these beers is high enough to cause internal organs to fail. Experts are baffled as to how the lead could have gotten into the mixture. The bottles were undisturbed, so they weren't added at a later date. One possible explanation is that the water used during the brewing process came from lead pipes, a practice that was outlawed in the early 1900s. As enormous as woolly mammoths were, we have evidence that some of our bravest ancestors used to hunt and eat them. Now, we also have evidence that they might have used their bones to make houses thanks to the discovery of a huge mammoth bone structure in Russia. At over 40 feet wide, it's possible that it was used for a larger purpose than just being a single home. But as a feat of bone-based engineering, it's spectacular, if a little grim. As the site is a very recent discovery, Initial research is still ongoing, but it's currently believed that it was built more than 25,000 years ago by human hands. It's generally thought that hunter-gatherers moved from place to place, rather than staying in the same spot for months or years on end. But they might sometimes have stayed a little longer if there was a good source of food in their immediate area. Perhaps this imposing mammoth bone cavern was made to house several of them at the same time. If that's the case, the occupants must have enjoyed a feast. The bones of over 60 full-sized mammoths have been found at the site. Structures made of mammoth bone have been found before across the east of Europe, but never one of this size or significance. We have a modern construction project to thank for this next discovery. A new dam is being built close to the ancient site of Zugma in Turkey, and so soon the whole area will be flooded. That fact focused the minds of archaeologists who scrambled to the site to uncover as much as they could before the water pours in. They weren't sure what they'd come across, but it's doubtful that they imagined they'd see these beautiful, perfectly preserved 2,200-year-old mosaics. They were found inside buildings dating back to a time when the city was known as Seleucia, before it was conquered by the Romans and renamed in 64 BCE. The conditions in the area have preserved the artwork so well that all of the original vivid colors still sparkle. Owning mosaics like these, which tell traditional ancient Greek mythological tales, would have been considered the height of class and sophistication in the era. If you wanted to impress your friends, 
you'd order a mosaic tribute to the three muses. And it's a tribute that stood the test of time. We tend to think of fast food as a plague of the modern age, one in which people find it cheaper and easier to get a McDonald's or a KFC than cook healthy food for themselves at home. In reality, there's nothing new about fast food. It's a concept that's existed since at least 2,000 years ago in the famous buried city of Pompeii. Archaeological work at the site of Pompeii never stops. And in early 2019, a team uncovered something called a thermopolium counter, covered in well-preserved ancient frescoes and dating back to the time of the volcano in the year 79. If you translate the name into English, it becomes the place where hot items are sold. Whoever owned or worked at this thermopolium would pre-prepare meals at home, bring them to the counter to heat them up, and sell them to passers-by cheaply. In other words, they sold ready meals, made ancient Roman style. There were more than 100 such facilities in Pompeii, and they kept the city's poorer residents fed with popular favorites, like baked cheese and spiced wine, the Big Mac and Coca-Cola of their time. We have moon rock on Earth, that's because astronauts have been to the moon and brought it back for scientists to study. How could rock from Earth end up on the moon, though? That's a question currently being pondered by scientists after one of the rocks brought back by the crew of Apollo 14 in 1971 was re-examined in late 2018 and found to contain quartz. The rock, officially known as Sample 14321, but better known as Big Bertha, contains far more quartz than one would expect to find on the moon's surface which is almost devoid of the material. Along with the quartz, the zircon inside the rock matches rock from Earth, but not rock from other moon samples. This points to the idea of the rock being formed in an oxidizing environment and rules the moon out. Their current best guess is that the rock was dislodged by an asteroid colliding with the Earth several billion years ago, a time when the moon was around three times closer to our planet than it is now. It's an intriguing idea, but they need more evidence to support that hypothesis. Of all the places we expected to learn more about ancient Viking runes, a comb would have to count as being among the least likely. Combs were in common use during the Viking era 1,200 years ago, and hundreds of them have been found buried all over the territory that once belonged to the warrior race. There's something special about the comb that was found in the ancient Danish market town of Reeb in December 2017, though. It has the word comb written on it in runes. On the other side, it says to comb. This is one of the earliest examples of the runic alphabet in a practical context. The new system had only just replaced Futhark, and historians have long wondered how long it took for the general population to adapt to the new alphabet. Why someone would write the word comb on an object that was so obviously a comb is a matter of some conjecture. But then again, People have salt and pepper written on their salt and pepper shakers today. It's likely that the person who made the inscription was teaching themselves to write and used household objects to practice on. To the Inca people, Lake Titicaca was the cradle of life. Their legends said that their civilization began below the lake when the children of the sun rose up from the waters. Spanish invaders knew that the lake was special too. They spoke of a lost city of Inca gold being underwater there, but they couldn't access it. The great Jacques Cousteau came to explore the lake in the 1950s, but found only pottery. A National Geographic expedition in 1988 came back almost empty-handed too. Finally, in the year 2000, a lost city and its buried treasure were found in a submerged area not far from the Bolivian town of Copacabana. And it turns out, that the Inca might have had a point about it being the birthplace of their civilization. The ruins found at the bottom of the lake are around 1,500 years old and predate the Inca comfortably. The most intriguing of all the discoveries isn't the gold or the treasure, but the enormous temple dedicated to an unknown god. Nobody knows who built this. The Tijuanaco or Tiwanaku people are both candidates, but by appearance, it looks to be far beyond their capabilities. The ritual of burying deceased rulers in grand tombs with elaborate face masks is most closely associated with the ancient Egyptians, but it isn't uniquely Egyptian. Here's evidence 
of a similar ritual being carried out in Guatemala during the 4th century. Found in the city of Huaca, a place of great importance to the Mayans, the previously undisturbed tomb dates back to around the year 350. It was immediately apparent that the tomb belonged to someone who held a lot of wealth and power, but the presence of the painted jade mask clearly identifies the occupant as a king. In the traditions of the ancient Mayans, kings were also living gods, and were treated as such even in death. Unfortunately, there isn't enough information inside the tomb to positively identify the monarch, but it's possible that he was King Tichan Ak, who ruled during the early 4th century and was a significant figure in the wider region as well as his home country. Both the mask and the remains of the king were painted a bright shade of red, for reasons that modern archaeologists are yet to determine. They say that the quality of wine improves with age, so perhaps we could interest you in the oldest unopened bottle of wine in the world. It's known as the Spire wine bottle after the German town it was found in, and it's been sealed for around 1600 years. The wax seal is air and water tight, and so the liquid inside it is, in theory at least, unspoiled. Despite that fact, scientists and experts have managed to resist the urge to open it ever since it was discovered in 1867 inside an ancient Roman tomb. The tomb belonged to a former Roman legionary, and so the wine was likely a gift to accompany him on his journey to the gods. Six bottles were found in total, but only this one still contains its original filling. That alone is remarkable. The bottle is made of glass, and Roman glass is notoriously fragile and weak. While scientists have concluded that the wine can probably still be consumed without harming the drinker, they warn that it would probably be extremely unpleasant to the taste. As the lower third of the bottle is clear, and the upper two-thirds are cloudy, something in the mix appears to have separated over time. Here's a question that very rarely gets asked. When did human beings start wearing trousers? We know that our ancient ancestors preferred to dress in gowns, capes, tunics, tights, and togas. So when did trousers become the order of the day? Apparently, the answer to that question is earlier than we imagined. It happened about 3,000 years ago in China. These raggedy-looking trousers were found in tombs in western China in 2016 and look remarkably similar to the garments we wear today. The legs are cut to a straight fit, and the reinforced crotch area suggests that they were designed to be worn by people who rode horses. From that, we might even surmise that the whole reason trousers were invented was to provide protection to the more delicate parts of the human anatomy while on horseback. If we accept that as the case, we have to query why it took so long for the idea of wearing trousers to reach Europe from China and became popular. The Europeans were also keen horse riders, so why weren't they wearing trousers? Ice is nature's great preservative. We all know that if a human or animal becomes entombed in ice, their remains will be better preserved for a longer time than the remains of someone buried in earth or mud. We didn't know it could work quite this well, though. When fossil hunters found this horned lark in the permafrost of northeast Siberia in 2020, they assumed it had become trapped there a few weeks or possibly a few months ago. They sent it for testing just to be sure and were astonished to hear that this bird carcass is actually more than 46,000 years old. Now known as the Icebird, it's believed to be the first example of a bird of that era being found in the Belaya Gora area. The species is an ancestor of the modern species of horned lark, although there are a few obvious visual differences. The fact that it froze in one piece, rather than decomposing and falling apart before it froze, tells scientists that the ice must have encased it almost immediately after death, and from that, they're now reassessing their theories of how the Earth's permafrost layer originally formed. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!